Hi, and welcome to my channel. On this week's episode, I'm going to be completely restoring my front control arms of my BMW E30. This video is going to contain the dismantling, the pressing out of the ball joints, the sandblasting, the POR15 painting of the control arms, and the installation of the ball joints and the poly bushes. In a previous video, I completely dismantled the subframe into subcomponents, which I've been working through to restore. As you can see, these lower control arms have definitely seen better days. The ball joint gaiters are totally torn and the actual ball joints are loose and notchy. So the first task was to prepare the ball joints to be removed. This included starting with removing the gaiters and then I can set up the press sleeve sizes for each individual ball joint. So to remove the ball joints, I'll be using my 20 ton hydraulic press, which I've purchased recently for this exact task. As you can see, it's not the best in the world, but with a bit of determination, I was able to remove all the ball joints with not too many issues. So with this new press kit, these arms uh, are able to be dismantled really easily. Uh, these ball joints were pretty tight, you've probably seen in the video. This one um, pretty much blew up the press, but um, it just all, kind of all fell apart. It doesn't look like they've been replaced before because there's little slip marks in them. But they're nothing massive, so they should be okay. Same as that one as well. So I've definitely done it the better way. Um, not nice to see that, but I'll just double check it. So now it's time to get these sent off for sandblasting. Due to the small size of my cabinet and the low power of my compressor, I decided to get these sent off with the subframe and the struts, just to save a lot of time. As you can see, when they arrived, due to a lot, slightly long wait in collecting them, there's some slight surface rust. So I'm going to tackle that first before I go on to the POR15. So I decided to use the POR15 metal prep to get these ready for the POR15 top coat. Just like the POR15, it's a simple brush on application. And all you need to do is apply the metal prep onto the surface and keep it wet for around 10 to 20 minutes. Simply wash them off, wipe them down, and then they're ready for the POR15 top coat. So this is what I'll be using for the control arms. It's exactly what I use for the subframe, but the only difference is with the control arm due to them being cast, you want to have a two layer uh, process. What you can do, if you watched the video before, you can see how it all works, but here's just me applying it in a time lapse. As you can see here, the paint has sank into the troughs of the cast, meaning the peaks are now on show. So what you want to do is apply on the coat, but due to the setting times of POR15, what you need to do is leave it for around three to four hours before you apply the second coat. With the second coat, it will cover over the peaks and make it all the same color. With the second coat applied to the one side, I left them for around 12 hours to cure and then was able to flip them and do the exact same process on the opposite side.
and here are the control arms after two coats of each end of POR15 and then I've left them for now about about a day curing time and they are pretty well set there's a few uh, runs where it's come through and I've missed them but obviously where they are it's not a massive issue it's just now that they're here on a nice clean table you can see them but the finish line is amazing to say that after the first coat everywhere is quite lumpy due to how the how the paint sits into the kind of the crevices after that second coat it's really helped with that also made it nice and uh, the color nice and even but what I want to do now is I've got a little bit of paint in there so obviously these are bearing not massively bearing surfaces there I've got crazy tight tolerances but I'm gonna look to uh, just remove that paint really really lightly with a, a wire wheel or like a sand brush wheel that I've got and have a go at kind of both options and see what works out best So after just a minute, um, using that little kind of sanding wheel, you can see it's took just paint off. I'm making sure not to get any of the metal. Make sure it's kind of focused on the uh, the areas where it's just where the paint's really thick. As you can see, I'm going to leave the rest of that because that's not that's obviously in some of like the divots. So um, happy with that. I'm going to get on with this one. We all ready. So with the control arms now ready, after around a three day curing time, you're able to now press in the ball joints. So what I'm using are lem folder inner and outer ball joints to keep it as OEM as possible. As something I haven't mentioned yet, um, with these lem folder ball joints, as you see, they've got these two notches. And what they help with is the orientation of the ball joint. This is quite an important thing, uh, just with how it kind of moves. And what you want is with the part of the lollipop bush facing upwards outwards you want to align these with that orientation so they want to both go towards the same orientation as the lollipop bush so when I press get the ready all I'm going to do is get all these sized up ready to go so I can press them in now I've been told it's best to slightly just grease up this gator and um, it kind of helps with insulation and helps create no kind of pinches because you don't want to be breaking a brand new gator I'm just going to do that now with just a little bit of grease and then they'll be ready to go. After a bit of playing about, just to get it nice and orientated as best I can, that's now ready to press in. pressed in it's nice and well seated luckily the uh, POR 15 did really well for holding up on the paint and there's no real scratch marks whatsoever so I'm really happy with that finish Here we have them both complete. I'm really happy with how the paint held up. Um, make sure there's no kind of marks whatsoever all the way around. One thing just to note out for is due to this tiny little gap here, depending on the size of your press, which mine is quite a thick one. What I've unfortunately done on the second one, it's just made a tiny little tear right in there, even with the grease and everything. So unfortunately I'm going to have to replace that gator, uh, but at least it was only one, I'm uh, quite happy with the overall process, especially when the first time doing it. I'm no, really happy, just a bit of grease to kind of clear up, and then these will be ready for the lollipop bushes. With the control arms now completed, I can move on to the lollipop bushes. So with these, I'm still going to start with the sandblast.
So after a quick sandblasting my cabinet, these are ready to go. I'm going to move on to the painting, which is going to be using this POR15 as I use with the control arms. So just a bit of paint transferred into a small pot and get started. Uh, what I've just done is quickly just brush these down to make sure there's no dust or debris on them and they'll be ready to paint. Um, it's not the most conventional setup, but I kind of want to paint them all in one. So I'm going to start by just picking them out, uh, filling in everywhere around the area, and I can hang them up and do the rest. After the first coat, he's looking great again. I will be giving these two, uh, depending on how this looks, in um, about three hours time, because that's normally about the curing time. But use anywhere that's kind of casted. I won't do it on these flat machine faces, but anywhere that's cast, it's usually quite good to cut. Just to put two layers on, as I did with the control arms. And once again, I've just wrapped up the brush and the, uh, the little tub in clean film, and I'm gonna come back to it about in three hours, keep the heat on, and give it a second go. So here we have the lollipop bushes. They've been left for a few days now, so the paint should be nice and well set. As you can see, another great finish. Really happy with these. Just so once again, a few little spill marks inside. So I'm going to look to remove them now. Um, so what I've got is the Powerflex uh, front arm bush kit. Um, comes with the two poly bushes, uh, the lube, and then a good little diagram of how it all works. And the first thing it says is to roughen the bores with some coarse grade sandpaper. Um, so I'm going to get that done now and get them ready to be installed. And then we have the final product. Obviously it doesn't match the, uh, the labelling. They went on pretty well. They are still quite stiff now. As you can see there's rotation between the two bushes, which I'm sure is going to kind of help with torsional stresses. So that's good. Uh, so all the ball joints are on, so now these are ready to go on. I'm pretty certain I've got these the right way around with how the, the whole centres match up, but I can always remove them if need be within this position. It's going to be a pretty long while before it all goes together. But there we go, that's them completed. Once again, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. But yeah, see you next time.